Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for this beautiful way the sun has been shining. I thank you, Lord, for all of your goodness. I thank you, Lord, for the great things that you've done in my life. I thank you, Lord, for the great things you've done in the life of this church. And Father, tonight we're celebrating your goodness. I pray, Lord, you be with Pastor Pete as he speaks to us tonight. I pray, Lord, that you would give him your words, that we would, um, that we would come out of his, out of his uh, devotional more equipped and excited to serve you. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come let us worship our King. Come let us bow at His feet. He has done great things. Come let us worship our King.
Well, aren't you thankful for that tonight? He does great things. That's why we're doing this right now, because we can believe that he does great things and he wants to speak to us tonight. I hope everybody's doing well. Uh, it was exciting to be together and see a few more faces than we normally see on a Wednesday night. We've got our 10 or so gathered together here on a Wednesday night, but we had a little over, oh, somewhere around 40-something total counting our praise team and worship band. It was great to be together with a few of you. I hope things are going well. If you have things that you need to let us know about, please do. Don't hesitate to call the church office and ask for help. If you need us to get groceries, I saw Jerry Mays come in yesterday to bring in his tithe check. And Jerry was moving a little slow, and I said, Jerry, does anybody helping you get groceries? He said, Pastor Pete, I've got 12 people on a list that I call one a different time and one another time. So we want to help out and be a part of that if we can. If you've got a need like that or some other way that we can help you out, let us know. Let me say thanks to each of you who have participated in helping us bring a devotional on Wednesday night. Um, not something that uh, maybe many of you have done. Those of you who shared, Kathy and Matt, Miss Lori, she teaches a Sunday school class. She doesn't count. Matt kind of teaches. Kathy does it for children, but probably hasn't done it for adult in a while. And Caleb Mays last week uh, just knocked the socks off of it or knocked it out of the park, whatever you want to say. Uh, I enjoyed that. If you don't know Caleb Mays at all, go back and watch last week and then come watch him because he's just the quiet guy. But uh, he was willing to get up here and share with us. So thanks, Caleb and everyone else for sharing last week and the weeks that you shared with us. We'll have others to share in the weeks coming ahead, but uh, I'm going to do tonight for us. Short and sweet to the point, keep it at five to ten minutes and get you on with the rest of your evening and into board meeting and the other things we have going on. Um, as I thought about tonight, uh, I was like, okay, God, what are we going to speak about tonight? What, what, what's something there? I prayed about it. I don't know about you, but during this whole time, I've spent a little bit extra time in, in prayer and on my knees and talking to God, and, and that's not really the way it should be. We should be spending time with God, but maybe a little bit extra fervently. Okay, God, what's going on? It's the, it's the COVID thing, and, and we're ready to be done. And even in that prayer time, we're saying kind of like, why is this happening? And, and, and when is it going to be over? Just to, to name a few questions that we're kind of questioning God about on things. And that human side of us tends to come out looking for those answers. I've learned that during a time like this, that more often than not, there's more questions than there are answers. And it brings us to our knees to learn to trust him a little bit more. If nothing else, that's what I hope that we come away with through all of this, that no matter what happens, God's there. In the good times, which we often forget to praise him and give him thanks for, and in the difficult times, like maybe we're facing some that have lost jobs, some that have lost jobs and got a new job, some that have, you know, struggled in other different ways. Maybe you're just tired of being in the house, and that's just been difficult, and I understand that. So as I was thinking about what to talk about tonight, I was thinking and started writing some things down and working on a lesson and a, and a short message, and just, it wasn't jiving, and I stopped and regrouped and did that again and stopped and regrouped, and this word just kept coming to my head. It's a word that I don't think right now we really like to hear because we don't know what's going to happen or when it's going to happen. It's the word normal. Does anybody know what that means? Because I don't think right now the word normal means the same thing today as it did three months ago. In fact, my conversation was something like this. Okay, God, I'm not sure what you're meaning by normal. What am I going to talk about? Like, right now life doesn't seem normal. His response back was something like, did I ever say things were going to be normal? What even is normal? And I went, huh, you got a point there. What's normal? So it got me thinking about things and how we approach things from the human standpoint and how he approaches things perfectly and in his time. Webster defines normal as this. It says, as people, we would define normal as conforming to a standard, usual, typical, or expected. That's definitely not happening now. However, if we look at it from God's standpoint, I think we would see that he looks at normal as being something different. I've seen him work, and oftentimes, there's nothing normal about how he works or nothing typical or nothing expected about it. God has a plan and his plan is normal. God has a desire to do what he wants to do and our plan is to follow him to whatever that normal leads us to. In other words, I think normal to God is a relative term. Look at some of the ways that God works in the normal or maybe the supernatural as we would call it. He turned water into wine. 
That was kind of a normal thing that he could do. John 2, verses 11 through, 1 through 11. He walked on water. Anybody ever done that? Anybody, let's be honest. Has anybody ever tried? You've, you've sat there and thought, okay, I'm, I'm just, I'm going to do it. I've got, I've got faith right now. And, and it says in John 6, 16, that Jesus walked on water. And Peter did it for a little bit, and then he fell in. Or what about feeding the 5,000? That's normal for what Jesus did. Or there's the healing of the paralytic man or stilling the storm, or healing the blind man. Or how about this scripture found in Matthew 12, 9 through 13? It says this, Then Jesus went over to their synagogue, where he noticed a man with a deformed hand. The Pharisees asked Jesus, Does the law permit a person to work by healing on the Sabbath? They were hoping they would say, that he would say yes, so they could bring charges against him. And he answered, If you had a sheep that fell into a well on the Sabbath... Wouldn't you work to pull it out? Of course you would. And how much more valuable is a person than a sheep? Yes, the law permits a person to do good on the Sabbath. Then he said to the man, hold out your hand. So the man held out his hand and it was restored just like the other one. Aren't you thankful that we are more important than sheep? Now sheep, I'm not even going to get into it. You can ask some of the farmers, but my understanding is they're good for wool and they're good for helping make clothes. But other than that, they're not the smartest animal in the world. I love the scripture. You see the beginning there where the Pharisees are trying to trap Jesus into doing something that, that he shouldn't be doing on a Sunday. Can't work on a Sunday, right? They knew what the law was and they knew what was supposed to be done. They knew what was normal. But God showed them that there's nothing with him that's normal. Then he turned to the man with a deformed hand, and he healed him. Can you imagine that man? Now, I don't know about you and what you picture when you think of a deformed man, but it's probably somebody who has a hand that's all twisted up and probably tucked under their arm or maybe inside their cloak, and they, they try and hide it here there. Maybe I'm going to pull that down a little bit. They, they try and hide it inside their cloak, and, and they don't want anybody to see. And I can imagine Jesus saying to him, hold out your hand. And the man kind of looked at him and just kind of went like this. He put out his hand. And no, Jesus was probably like, no, your other hand. And he pulls it out. And at that instant, it was healed. And his hand was normal. But it was by an unnormal or what we would call a supernatural act. I can't imagine the feeling that must have come over that man. The joy, probably a high five using that new hand, right? And, and, and high five in Jesus or whatever it is. Maybe the full 10, whatever it took. The fact that God touched him. I imagine it was an overwhelming feeling. There's nothing normal about God. Let that sink in for just a minute. There's nothing normal about God. Again, we wrap things and put them in a little box, and this is what normal, and I want to get up at 8 o'clock, and I want to do breakfast, and I want to do all these things, and we have our schedule set out, and God has a plan that doesn't fit into our normal. It fits into his normal. There's nothing normal about serving him. There's nothing normal about following him in complete surrender and faithful obedience. The question we should be asking ourselves tonight as we continue through these days is normal. What is normal? Follow him in everything you think, everything you say, and everything you'll do, and you'll learn what the true meaning of normal is. It means sacrifice. It means giving of yourself and your own desires. It means trusting in the unknown. I don't know about you, but right now I need a whole lot of normal. And there's a lot of people in our congregation that are needing some of that as well. Let me share with you a few prayer requests of ones that we know of. We've been praying for Betty Newberry now for a week or so, and she has some tests that's going to take place later this week and continuing to find some answers. She is home, and so that's a great thing to know. But uh, be praying for Betty. Be praying for Velma Pieri. She goes tomorrow, I think it was, tomorrow. Velma will tell me if I'm wrong. But uh, tomorrow for cataract surgery, tomorrow or Friday, and be praying for her during this time. Um, Jerry and Jean Mays. I mentioned Jerry. We found out yesterday when he came in that Jerry himself had been in the hospital. In fact, you know that Jean's been struggling, and their daughter, Pat, who kind of helps take care of them, has been in the hospital. So they definitely could use your prayers. In fact, if you're out and about and you feel comfortable, I know social distancing is important, and we need to do that. 
but stopped by a few of these people's houses. Tina Eggers came in yesterday and said, hey, what can we do to be ambassadors? How can we go visit some of these people? And I said, let's just go do it. And it takes a matter of going and looking at maybe get on the Simple Church app and look up a few of those people that uh, you might know need a special touch from you. But let's pray for some of these people and let me close this night in a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you for who you are, for the fact that you are our King, you are the Lord of Lords, the Almighty. God, sometimes we admit that we get stuck in the normal or what we expect to be normal. I ask you would help us tonight to trust you, to follow your normal, and that is to trust you completely in everything that we think and say and do. God, I ask you would be with each of these that we've shared tonight. I know that's just the tip of the iceberg of some of the needs in our congregation. And so I just ask that you would go to these houses, to hospital rooms and touch. We know that you've done that. We've seen that evidence through healing, uh, through surgeries recently, and how you've touched and are continuing to work. And we just ask right now in these needs that you would go to them, that you would provide the comfort they need right now, that you would provide answers through the doctors as they continue to search and find and try and figure things out. God, tonight we just say that we love you. We want to follow you. We want to surrender to you completely, faithfully and obediently to follow your plan and to follow your normal. Wherever that leads us, wherever that takes us, whoever that brings here, that we would learn to trust you in everything that we think, everything that we say, and everything that we do. We love you, and it's your name we pray this all. Amen. Sing this with us if you know it. I count on one thing. The same God that never fails will not fail me now. He won't fail me now in the waiting. The same God who's never waited is working all things out. He's working all things out. you high in the lowest valley. Yes, I will bless your name. Yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy all my days. Yes, I will.
I, amen. I hope that's your, your prayer tonight, your commitment, your commitment. That's what I hope it is, that you're going to praise him in the hard times, in the good times, and every time in between. That's our goal here at Forest Home Church. Thank you for being with us tonight. Remember, remember tomorrow at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, that's your deadline for letting us know if you're coming to church, and I hope you will. I hope you will. Um, now, if, if, you're, if you're anxious, we, we're not here to push you out of your comfort zone. To some degree, that's true. That's not totally true. But with this, if, you, if, you, if you're terrified of the virus and you're afraid of picking it up here, we don't want you here, okay? But if that's not, your, if that's not you, if you're, if you're fine to go to Walmart and go to restaurants, well, come on to church. It'll be good. It'll be good. And um, the worship team will be here. And uh, they brought it strong this past Sunday. It was great. This, this is a wonderful team. We have wonderful tech crew. Um, I, I'm, I'm tickled to death with our team, the way they've stood by and, and helped us get through all the, these times and continuing to do so. So thank you to them. And thank you to you for being here with us tonight. And I hope you'll be with us Sunday morning, either right here in person or there on YouTube and Facebook. Thanks so much for being with us tonight. Have a great night.